This is a recording of the presentation I gave at Godotcon 2019, making open games together with Godot. This presentation is not so technical, it's more about ideas, collaboration and becoming productive. I hope you'll like it, let's get started. So I'm coming to you with a secret. My secret for growing fast in life. It's the trick I've used to go from doing nothing, playing games all day, to creating a successful company, teaching and contributing to free software. In this presentation, you'll learn how you can become a better game developer efficiently, even without formal education. You will learn that free software is a good thing, as if you did not know. And this will lead us to talk about making open games together and why collaborating that way matters. But first, allow me to tell you a little story. I used to be a master procrastinator. In my teenage years, I would talk at length about starting projects and never really get anything done. I would write down intricate ideas in great details, pitch them on forums, and then double click on World of Warcraft, where I'd spend the rest of the week. I was never really motivated to finish projects, let alone to get them started. I was a fearful kid. It would just take for a truck to drive through the street closest to our home for me to run back to my mum in tears. I was afraid of everything and anything new. Afraid to go to school, to learn to swim. My parents liked to tell an anecdote about that, my first swimming lesson. I was six or seven, I think. They put me in the pool and asked me to do the breaststroke. As the story goes, I started swimming and with each move I was saying something like I won't make it, I won't make it. That's who I was back then, afraid of change and, as I would only understand much later, of the responsibility of success and the shame of failure. And these are the two possible outcomes if you plan to get anything done. Fast forward a few years and I now work more than ever. I run a social company, take projects to completion, keep working even when things get hard, especially when things get hard. Uh, I can take risks, make mistakes, fail and hopefully succeed sometimes. So how did we go from scared, chubby little Nathan to a full-time independent developer? It's like climbing a mountain. For most of the way, I couldn't really measure the progress and the change. It took time and diligence. But looking back, I'm certain of one thing. Working in free software had a lasting positive impact on me, professionally and personally. I have to confess something. I did not learn to code at school. I'm what you would call a self-taught developer. But this, to me, hides a different reality. I learned in books, in tutorials, with the help of manuals, and more importantly, mentors. All these tutors who created all the resources I've used are my mentors. In other words, I learned from people and I consider that they got me where I am now. That is where free software comes in. The people who taught me the most, my closest mentors, I met contributing to free software. I learned to code and much more thanks to Godot, to projects like Blender, etc. I received code reviews and feedback from fellow contributors which accelerated my learning beyond imagination. That is because when you work in free software, the developers and the people there are people who share pretty much everything they know. With that mix of practice and mentorship to guide my learning, I made more progress than with any tutorial up to that point. Remember the fear of success and of failure I talked about earlier? Contributing to free software gave me a safe environment where I could do small projects that mattered with experienced people to guide me. That really kept me motivated, helped me gain more confidence and led me to find meaning and purpose in my work. I sometimes find myself now just finishing a project that can benefit people or for my teammates or after work, extending my work days a little bit. And remember, I used to be a big, big procrastinator. 
Now, uh, there is a big myth in our modern societies. To me, it's the um, tale of the self-made individual, the American dream. Someone who just works hard to rise to the top all by themselves. We are social animals, born weak and hopeless. We are really nothing without one another. Without care and people to educate us, we would die. So here I'm thinking about, for example, we all need parents or a mother. As a baby, we are really helpless otherwise. So if you, like me, have ever tried to make your dream game, a mix of, say, Final Fantasy, GTA, and a bit of World of Warcraft, because it has to be massively online multiplayer, and you've tried to do that alone, of course, you may have hit a wall and failed miserably. I have, at least. You can't do that alone. And it's not just a question of time or effort. You can't know everything that you need to know to make a killer game with that. You can't take the best decisions without the rich experience of others. And so now you know. You know my secret. I ended up where I am now for the most part because I embraced collaboration, working with others, giving a bit of my time and energy and listening to people. And I got that from free software. Now let us talk a little bit about open games. We're going to start with what we do at GD Quest because that's quite related. So, as I was saying, my positive experience with free software affected me and that also influenced our company, GD Quest. So I founded a social company called GD Quest or Game Design Quest. Social company means that we try to make money but all the money that we make is invested or reinvested in hiring people so that we can do more content and more contributions to free software in our case. We teach people to make games using free software and use educational projects to produce, promote, and contribute to open source projects ourselves. We are now a small, mostly part-time team trying to grow so we can get more done. Um, I'll add that this is our open 3D mannequin that we are currently producing. It's been coded by Josh Bush, Cheesiness, and it will be available on the Godot Asset Library, including the Blender file to use and expand on the animations. So that's an example of the kind of work we do. Now, just like good games revolve around a core mechanic or a fundamental theme, we have a core mission. At first, it was helping you become better game developers. The focus is now on collaboration. We evolve the mission into bringing people together to become better game developer. Now, bringing people together, that is easier said than done. It's really challenging to get people to give of themselves in a world where we tend to praise and admire the takers. Um, here's an example. Today, billionaires can be seen as successful people, self-made men and geniuses, even if in practice they contribute to the inequalities of our time, very high inequalities that are toxic, I believe. Uh, I think this is slowly changing, although still, right now, individuality and competition tend to be exacerbated, especially in the Western world. Okay, let's talk about what drives us. I believe that taking does not make us happy or motivated. And by happy here, I mean in the long-term uh, form of the word. Possessions do not bring happiness. You can have a lot, but if you're lonely, I don't think it will help you. Think about when you got the latest phone, a new car or something like that. You're pretty excited the moment you get it and several days later, it's like it's always been there. You lost that feeling. So now, what can drive us uh, more in the long term then? I think that connections are really important. Existing in the eyes and in the mind of someone else. Feeling loved or cared for. Then, to me, there is responsibility, having meaning and purpose in our lives, doing things that matter for those who care. And finally, harmony is really important to me, respecting yourself and acting according to your values. 
The thing that's interesting is that you get all that contributing to free software and more actually. Shared interests can get people started, having a common need or problem to solve. That's what we got with the Open RPG project, which is a tool to create RPGs, like JRPGs. We have had some success creating projects like these, so we have been 13 direct contributors on Open RPG, and with entire features like some of the UI you see here, written by community members. In the future, we're looking to go one step further to speak to more people, to go beyond just teaching or revolving around Godot itself, so to go beyond technical interests. We want to make open games with everyone, while looking to create projects that open the door to more than just developers. We want to get all sorts of people involved in creating meaningful games and apps together. Lately, with the team at GDQuest, we've been talking about what gets people to care about the work we do and to stick together. And I think that we lack a narrative to get one step further. In general, we human beings need stories that move us to feel connected to a goal or a cause, something that clicks or speaks right to our hearts. Even Godot uses one of these stories to poke at your curiosity. If you go to the official website, the first line you'll see is an intriguing wordplay. Godot, the game engine you waited for. So now, what story or narrative could we use to get people working together on games? There's a topic that's dear to me, that we're all concerned by, and that I think has the potential to bring people together. It's ecology. Imagine for a second, having people from all around the globe coming together to improve our understanding of complex environmental issues with free and open source games. Does that sound interesting to you? Now, I'm not only thinking about climate change here, but things like pollution, which is the first cause of death in the world today. Water access, there are countries that are already under water stress every year here right now. And there's also the way we produce food that takes a lot of land away from people, kills biodiversity, and in general puts us at risk in different regions of the world. There's a heap of really complex and polarizing problems for us to approach and to play with there. And that is exactly where games shine, simulations in particular. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that any of this would be easy to do. Today, I'm just proposing an idea to you. We, free software developers, have a superpower. We can bring diverse people together to solve complex problems in a way that benefits everybody. We may all come from different backgrounds, live in different time zones. We manage to create great projects organically. As such, the work we do together is more than the sum of our contributions. Meaning, a sense of community, technical challenges, an inspiring narrative, we all together are the driving force. Thank you. Okay, there was one question during the presentation that I'll answer here. Which games are we going to make? Well, while preparing some concepts for Godot to create some open game, now it takes a lot of preparation to do that, to see how we can get funding and assemble a team. Uh, this is a long-term plan, so we still have the current Kickstarter to finish. Expect announcements about that in months, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer in the comments below. And with that, I want to thank you kindly for listening to the end of that presentation that might be uncommon in our field. Stay creative, have fun, let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.